All right, so we're gonna dispense a 1536 well plate using the peristaltic pump on the Biotech EL406 wash dispense. Um, so start by turning it on in the back. Um, and then for the computer, we're going to log in with our cruise ID. The software is called Liquid Handling Control. And so when you get here, you want to tell it what um, hardware we're going to load. So for that, you go Tools, Instrument Utilities, and we're going to use the Peristaltic Pump. And we're going to use a one microliter cassette for this because the 1536 well plate has a two to three or four microliter assay volume. Um, so to, to dispense that most accurately, you do a one microliter cassette. Each revolution of the pump is going to be one increment. So for three microliters, it'll just rotate three times. So you click on the one and then you say send. It'll say cassette type, cassette type set and then you exit and click here on the settings and you say get. Those two steps allow the device to get the information and the current protocol to get the information. Um, it's annoying, but that's just how it works. And so while you're in this window, you can open any protocol that you want. So, let's see, do I have a Perry 1536 protocol? I wonder, I'm gonna use one from the Loki lab. So the files are all saved in the C drive, program data, biotech, liquid handling control protocols. So if this ever, you know, goes to a different place, that's so you know where to go. Um, and then you just, each lab has their own folder um, and you can just look for a protocol that's the one that you want. I actually want this one. When you open a protocol, it'll say over here the plate type, and so in this case it's a 1536 well plate, and then the steps are outlined over here. Um, the steps that are for the wash module have a W, the steps for the syringe module have an S. Where's the S? Well, I don't see it in the list for some reason right now. Um, and the ones with the peristaltic module, that's what we're going to use, have a P. And our steps have a purge, and then there's a bunch of primes that's for washing the cassette. Um, we actually don't need to do that, so I'm gonna just temporarily delete those. Um, we just need one prime today. Um, and then we're also not gonna use the bio stack. That's for if you have a stack of plates. We're just gonna prime. Um, you can double click on any step for more information. So this is a 150 microliter fixed volume prime um, with the one microliter cassette. And for this cassette, I usually, let's try a medium flow rate, see how that goes. Um, and then for, after the prime, there's a dispense step. It's gonna dispense four microliters um, per well. It says per tube because, you know, each tube is going into a well. Um, but really it's the well that you care about. Um, try medium speed with the one microliter cassette. There are also advanced options um, where you can set which wells you want. Um, I'm just going to say all the wells, but um, because it's an eight channel dispensing head and a 1536 well plate has 32 rows, each tube actually goes to four rows on the plate and so that's why you have an option to say which of those rows you want to be, uh, to get dispensed into and you can also then pick which columns it does. 
Um, you can choose if you want a pre-dispense, that's just like a little boop, little mini prime before it dispenses, it helps get rid of the bubbles. Um, and you can change the positioning, um, that's important, like if you have different types of plate plastics, um, you know, if it's not dispensing in just the right spot that you want, then you can change the heights and locations. So, um, we just say okay, and then, um, this protocol will then go into um, a purge followed by some primes for washing the cassette. So that seems good. Um, so I just made modifications to this person's cell titer glow assay protocol. So before moving forward, I'm going to go save as and give it a new name. Um, I'm going to make it a CSC demo. Um, Let's see, it's going to be CSC Demo Perry 1536, um, and I'll just put the dates. Alright, um, so once your protocol is ready, um, you need to load the cassette. Um, for this, we're going to be using the one microliter cassette. The cassettes are in the second drawer. The different ones have different tube diameters. The one microliter cassette has the skinniest tubes. Peel off the top. Gently remove the cassette. So you start with this piece and you have to hold it in your right hand because it has to be pointing that way, not that way. Um, if you do it the wrong way, it kind of sort of fits, but if you do it the correct way, it actually clicks into place. Um, and then you will gently bring the other parts below the pump. This piece on the right kind of just slides into play where it needs to go. And the left one, you can kind of feel it when it's in the right place. And then you close this sandwich. Um, you do have to apply some tension uh, when you're doing that. It's not a lot, um, but don't be scared. Um, and you make sure these tubes are straight um, because their being on the barrel here is what's determining the volume that's getting dispensed. Um, basically, this little piece of liquid between the spokes of the barrel is called the slug volume. Um, the tension on the tubes combined with this, you know, tube diameter and distance is what's determining what volume is going to be dispensed. Um, and then you close over here, and this is going to go into whatever solution you want to dispense. Um, it has this um, weighted head, so if you wanted different rows to get different liquids, you could remove these and put them in your different liquids. Or um, also if you want to be more sterile, um, because this little thing is harder to sterilize, um, you could just remove them and not use it. But today we're going to use it for convenience and um, we're going to be dispensing this. You want to make sure that the end goes all the way into the liquid. If it was up here, then it would just, you know, dispense air. Uh, so you want to make sure it's down there in the liquid. Um, and you also want to make sure that the tubes aren't going to get caught in the mechanism. Um, so we're just going to like pull it a little bit away so that the tubes aren't in there. Um, and you put your sample plate here in the holder and you want to make sure that A1, the top left corner of the plate, is going to be in the top left corner of the holder. And there's a little reminder sticker here. Um, and so now we're ready. The protocol is ready. All you have to do is click run. the green liquid going through. That's the pre-dispense. And now it's dispensing four microliters into each row. So this is where you see how the each tube goes to four different rows. So you could be dispensing eight different cell types or stains or um, you know media compositions, whatever it is you want to dispense.
that's done, this protocol has a purge programmed in, so it just let all of the dye that was in the tubes um, come out. That's kind of the dead volume, so it helps recover those. Um, and that's especially good if you're using this to dispense precious liquids. Um, we usually use the one microliter for precious things since it's got the smallest tube, so it has the smallest dead volume. Um, so you're wasting less of your liquid, but you can recover the liquid that was unused. Um, and then for our protocol, we're going to be rinsing the tubes with soap and water um, to clean it before we're done. Um, when you do that, make sure that you get the outside of the tubes by shoving the tubes, you know, into the flask and actually making sure they all get wet and, and you know, rinsed off. Um, because the priming is only going to clean the inside of the tubes, not the outside. It's, it's going like this, it's cleaning the outside. Um, so we go over here and, you know, I just have some prime steps with prompts in between. And we'll do one with soapy water, one with regular water. Um, so you'll notice how I swirled that. That's to get rid of the soap. You know, every step you want to make sure you're cleaning the outside of the tubes to get rid of whatever it just came from. Um, and so you just hit enter between each of them. And, um, I, there was a little bit of soap, you know, residue that came from there into here, so I'm actually just going to change this out and get fresh water. with DI water, not regular faucet water, um, so that there won't be ions drying into the tubes. Um, for the steps where you do soapy water, this is the soap. Um, it's the squirt bottle, and you would just squirt some into your water. It's not a quantitative, you know, just squirt a little bit of soap. That's how we make the soapy water. This stuff is just water plus Alkanox. This is a powder. Um, cleaner. It's like a very strong lab cleaner. So we're going to DI water for a final rinse. You know, make sure we get it good on the outside. Um, when it primes, this is the waste collection bucket. All of that liquid gets um, collected into this waste bottle. So you want to make sure you never get this filling more than two-thirds full. If you do, you have to unscrew the lid and go dump it in the sink and put a little bit of bleach inside before re-screwing it back on. If it gets too full, then some liquid will overflow into the backup bucket, which has a sensor, and it will tell there's liquid there and then cause your protocol to stop. Um, because it's doing that to protect our vacuum pump from getting liquid sucked into it. Um, so it will kind of ruin what you're doing if you allow your waste to overflow. Um, okay. So then we'll do one more water. And then for the final step, I just, you know, bring it up into the air. So that then this is effectively going to be drying. So this is what the dispensing looked like, lovely. Um, yeah, so that's our 1536 well plate, all dispensed. Um, so we're done. We finished with the cassette, so we want to remove it and pack it in its packaging. So you open over here, press this little lever that just releases it. Um, if, you, if you're coming back later to use it, so you don't want to have to completely pack it away, then you pull that lever towards you and release it onto there. Um, this is like an intermediate holding pattern um, that's gentle on the tubes without um, making you have to completely remove it. Um, but where you don't need this anymore, so you put that back and just let it open 
don't need to bring out the pieces and unclip the end piece. And then the easiest way to get it to fit in its carried case is to take the part that has the writing on it and put it in the cutout place that fits that shape. Um, and then that makes it relatively easy to know where, how to put the other pieces. So that one goes there. This one can go here. You want to make sure you put it in a position where there's no tension on the tubes. So like this is probably okay. This one it would be too much tension. This would be damaging to the tubes. So you just want to select, you know, something in between. This is lovely. Um, this would be the other extreme where the things are getting too um, jankety. So you just pick a medium. Gen just so that they're resting in a relaxed state. And coil the, around there. If you did take off the little weight, then remember to put it back on for the next person. And you just put the lid on. And this goes in the drawer. Put away your whatever samples you brought with you. Um, you may want to wipe up if there was any mess. Turn off the instrument in the back. Um, and then I'm just gonna. So when you're done with the protocol, you just X out the software and then you click on Windows and on your profile icon and say sign out. Now it's ready for the next person to come. Uh, yeah, any more questions? All right, that's the end. <laughs>